Hey, everybody. Brian and Andy here with another edition of Bird Brain 66. What's up, Brian? It is all good, Andy. Happy 2024. Yep, happy 24, 2024 to everyone. Hey, today we're going to take a look at the uh, iconic 1984 set because this is the 40th anniversary of the 1984 Donruss set, which set the uh, card world on fire back in the uh, mid-80s with its uh, unique card stock and design. As, uh, everybody was very, uh, I don't know, enthralled with this particular set but when you go back and really take a look at it 40 years later i don't find it all that cool to be quite honest i mean i i'm going to agree with you 100 percent i'm uh i like the little wave here at the bottom I'm not 100 percent sure if i like the the color combination yeah it's i mean to me, it, it has not aged well as far as mm -hmm. card sets are concerned, you know, but again, this was all the rage. And I think that uh, as we continue to look at the card sets uh, moving forward and card sets we've looked at in the past, that Donruss has actually produced some uh, card sets that look much better than this particular set. But as we all know, the, the famous Don Mattingly card was introduced in 1984. That was the uh, that was a hot commodity then, still a hot commodity for the set now. A couple other notable rookies were Daryl Strawberry and Joe Carter, and again, and also with our own Andy Van Slyke with the in the uh, St. Louis Cardinal organization. There he is. A little bit of glare there. We get that because I got the penny sleeve on that one. Yeah, I, I, I mean it's it's incredible because I went back and did a little reading about this set, and I was, and I was like, man, what is it? What was the big hype about this particular set? I mean, and. They always did a good job with these uh, uh, Donruss Diamond Kings. Though. I really always love these things. And uh, this yeah, the particular set has 24 Cardinals and 25 with the Suter error because they're the way the uh, Perez deal was put on the back of the card, which makes it an error. Oh, well, that yeah, I, that, now that um, now I remember what the error is. So uh, they misspelled steel without the E. Yep on the first variation that's right or on the first print we were so, talking for the recording as to what the air was but as soon as you said that yeah that jumped back out that jumped out at me for me the probably the coolest card in this set is this one right here for me i was just i was Run, pulling the same thing running red oh. there you see the, the only disappointment is why'd they shorten red birds to reds yeah exactly not 100 percent sure i would almost consider this an error card because of that because they we've never been called the running reds and They're for con them. continuity purposes why why doesn't uh, willie have a jacket on you know just uh but you know picture of the moment at the time so but a cool still still nonetheless cool, very cool card uh, oh yeah a particular set yeah to grab four of four of the players like that and like you said i'm not 100 percent sure I always love willie cards oh yeah so, why they couldn't take an extra couple of seconds and say, "Hey, Willie, can you can you look at the camera, please?" But uh, that that one's always puzzled me. But remember, in '81, we've talked about this because we we reviewed uh, uh, some of the uh, earlier sets. Remember how flimsy the card stock was the, the yeah. first year, especially the, especially the '81 version. Yeah, just crazy. But so here's another thing, you know, that you got to start looking at when you look at the the set overall. Uh, you know, now we're getting ready for the transition from a, a week 83 team after the World Series, a kind of ho-hum 84 to the rise of the, the 85 and then on to the 87 team. So, Well, and, and they weren't a bad team that year. They were actually 84 and 78, actually third in the National League East, but uh, they fell behind the uh, Cubs. As the Cubs were in first place that particular year. But here's your home run leader for that year, 15 home runs in 1984. So. Mr. David Green, there he is. Yep. Always was a puzzle as to what his real age was. But here's the guy that always made me sad that we released. This guy was an absolute stud uh, in yep. his, I mean, he thrived in the Whitey Ball era in terms of hitting for average, a little bit of power, uh, st stole bases. I mean, there was a card out there. Uh, it's a Fleer card, the Smith Brothers, where it's Ozzy and 
Lonnie skates because he had a little difficulty judging balls in the uh, in the outfield. But one of my all time underrated Cardinal players. Same Silent with George, guy. there he yep. is. Led the league, or I shouldn't say the league, but led the Cardinals with sixty nine RBIs that year. Looks like his glove looks massive in this picture. Mm -hmm. But uh, there, there he is. And look at there, look at there, look at take it one more time. He's he started the famous. I've got my my uh, pants pulled all the way down to my my shoes, so you can't yep. see my sock my socks look. So <clears throat> that was that was pretty cool. Here's here's a, another great uh, pitcher that the Cardinals had back in the mid '80s, and this is really a shame because in '84, you know, he led the he led the National League with 20 wins. Mm -hmm. Not only that, he led in innings and shutouts. He had four shutouts that particular year, and uh, felt came in fourth in the Cy Young voting. Voting us, uh, Rick Sutcliffe actually won that year, and he didn't even get one first place vote. Yeah, it, it's just, it's just, it's, it's very, it's, it's, it's incredible. What a crime that was that he didn't win the Cy Young award that year. Well, uh, bias, the bigger, big market bias. I mean, you had the Cubs playing on the mighty WGN. Uh, station so uh, that was all the rage you remember coming home after after school and stuff and and my mom and I would sit and uh, watch a little bit of uh, Cubs baseball before doing homework or I had a paper route back in the day so I would do that or you and I cut a lot of grass at the same time so I would yeah. always spend time watching the Cubs I think that had a lot to do with uh, and the Cubs won of course so and there you go. Obert fell. He was traded mid mid year that year, so that was the last uh, last run for him. Here we go. We got another interesting card of Suter. You know, you know uh, looks like he's got sweat pouring down him. But anyway, he was the uh, save leader that uh, that year in nineteen eighty four. He had forty five saves for the Cardinals. So you know what he was the uh, was he the NL uh, fireman of the year? Remember we always tried to figure out, and I don't know if we've ever come up with that answer. So if anybody does, uh, when they used to call the uh, the save leaders the uh, the NL and the AL fireman of the year, is that because they were coming in and you know kind of like saving a lot, putting it out, saving the game? Yeah, they're putting the putting it putting the uh, putting the uh, scoring threats out, uh, but. Going back to Bruce just for a second, love the wizard there, but you know, uh Bruce being in the Hall of Fame because of his uh shutouts, the guy who would come in and maybe sometimes pitch two and a third innings, not what they do anymore in today's era where it's like maybe two outs, they get the save, or maybe three. It's rare. And you get nervous when you get watch guys come in out of the bullpen in the eighth and try to pitch an inning and a third for any team. It's you're kind of on pins and needles and here Bruce was doing it on a, on a regular basis and loved yeah. that Ozzie Smith card. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to not no, have it good. good to say about the wizard. No, that's all good. But uh, one of the fan favorites from back in the eighties, Tommy Herr. We were uh, we always talk about this. We were at Bush Stadium for the the big trade, the infamous trade. Yeah, Tommy to the Twins for Bruno, John Stuper, another another quality pitcher for the Cardinals back in the eighties, uh, along with Mister Forsh. Never gets uh, oh, he never gets a lot of uh, respect. Dude had two freaking no. Oh, hitters. Yeah. And just, I, I guess, playing again in the market in St. Louis, even though he was on uh, on the 82 World Series team. Yeah, he was often overlooked. But man, when his stuff was on, he was downright yeah. nasty. Unhittable. I mean, he also had several one hitters and two hitters in his in his career. I love the. I mean, other than it, you know, the the design that we talked about, really, really yeah. enjoyed this set, and I love. I've always appreciated the the uh, the Diamond Kings look. I'm glad that uh, Panini has those from time to time. Anybody else in here that you really like? I mean, we. Or, oops, I got to show. Well, this go guy. I'm just taking him out of the penny sleeve. This oh, guy. Ben Cox, yeah. He ended up being a monster for the Cardinals for several years, eating up a lot of innings. Also a very fiery pitcher, too, which um, 
took me back to the, like the Bob Gibson stuff, like to throw at people, like to talk it up and be I angry. Dane Orge, one of our great utility players back in the day. We always had somebody like Dane Orge, a great utility player, whether it was him or Steve Braun. Um, just I love those kind of guys. Mike Laga. Um, but Dane Orge had a couple of big hits. A great ball player. Who else have we got there? That's probably, I mean, oh, well, here's another guy, too. You know, if you want to talk about great utility guys for the Cardinals back in the 80s, Mike Ramsey. Oh, oh gosh, yeah. Duh. Forgot about him. He was kind of our second baseman, third baseman backup, had some had some key hits in the World Series in 82. Yeah. Great guy. Weird uh, shot of him, just the side profile, yeah. but good overall, good, all, good overall player. And notably, then, notably absent in this particular set, and you know, it's just based on probably timing. There was T Terry Pendleton, yeah, you know, so he didn't uh, he didn't rate to get a card in this set, and you know, obviously they were already running this print production before <clears throat> Pendleton made his debut. So not like today where they can you know they'll churn something out if they if they need to, and then sometimes they don't, you know, just depending right. on how the card companies work, especially you know. Yeah, and you know what was interesting too. There, um, Tops was the only. I can't remember if Fleer was doing it or not, but Tops was the only one doing an update set. Remember, I think I can't remember when when say, Fleer Donner started. I want to say Fleer started in '84. I'm not co correct. I'm not 100 percent on that. Okay. I know Donneris did not that particular year, but uh, so, okay. started and obviously we know in '82 because the famous uh, Ozzy Smith and uh, Cal Ripken cards are in that particular right. Year. So. Exactly. And then um, I'm trying to think, was it wasn't it Donruss in 85 that when they did come out with the Pendleton card, the first run, it was Jeff Pendleton? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So then there, that's the other fun card in that set. So I would be remiss if I didn't show a couple of the action all stars. There you go. The I, didn't, I didn't pull those. I didn't pull those out. But uh, yeah, those are great, great cards. Nice shot that smoothie there on the back. Yeah, let me show the other one. A little disappointed that there were not more Cardinals represented. But again, this was the All-Stars from 83, so that was when they had their their dip. So then this was another interesting insert set to it. So I'm going to show Lonnie here getting some more love. This is the called the Donruss Champions. Which is, which is interesting in itself. Yeah, exactly. That is Rogers on the back. Yeah. And then, again, sorry, pulling him out of sleeves. And there he is there. Uh, but Lonnie doesn't appear on the back of his card. I know. It's, it's no, no rhyme uh, or no rhyme or reason. But I did, I did. I like these. They were a little bit harder to uh, to find, and when you did find them, a little bit harder to keep them in in decent shape because when you tried to open up packages, it seemed like to me that the corners got. Oh yeah, that's and that's, that still happens with box toppers and stuff today, even at the tops boxes, because of the way they're packaged, you know, you always got to worry about the corner damage. So overall, I, uh, I it this is not this set is not as impressive as. Uh, it, I guess it was for 1984, but uh, for 2024 and over the year, Donners has produced much better looking cards, you know, even up until their demise, you know. So, yeah, this is to me, this is not one of my favorite Donner sets. Actually, the I th to be honest, the 81 is one of my favorite Donner sets because it's just like they jammed that thing out and had no care in the world to what they were even doing. Yeah. Just like me, it was like you and I putting out a card set. So I, yeah. I, I that's what I liked about that. It was just like a raw card set. Hey, we're throwing people out. We don't care what uniform they have on or anything. We're exactly. Just... It was like, uh, hey, Andy, we've got uh, 25 to 30 minutes to put out a 600 card set. What do you think? And we just grabbed what, whatever and yeah. just said, ah, that, just throw it out there, throw it out there. Who cares? Who cares? All righty. So 40, 40 years of, uh, of have gone by from that set. So before we get into some of the, pop culture stuff here 
Uh, so that was, uh, well, this coming spring will mark 40 years of our uh, graduation from uh, Belleville East High School, which is in and of, in and of itself um, hard to believe. But before we jump into that, so um, I don't know if we want to continue doing this. We did a a set earlier where we uh, gave something a letter grade. I would think on on this particular one, even though it was uh, all the all the rave, considering Terry Pendleton is missing some good quality shots. I think I would give it like a B minus. Yeah, C plus B minus. Um, that's where I'm at with this one. I mean, it, it again, not really impressed with the with the set overall after all these years. So what's our what's our pop culture reference well, before we start well, recording? We got lots of music. Well, obviously, it's 40 years since the uh, release of the uh, Van Halen 1984 album, which was released on uh, January 9th, 1984. So, uh, obviously, great album for van halen last with david lee roth last studio album with david lee roth until 2012's uh, different kind of truth which is often overlooked because a lot of people don't like that one which actually sounds more like the uh the you know the uh earlier van halen stuff but for right. whatever reason people don't like the sound or what I, I, that one baffles me but i think that one is actually one of their uh, better uh, recordings as well, you know, because they took some old demos they had and put put the songs out back in 2012. But that's another story. But for '84, yeah, the, you know that that was for for rock music. That was the uh, rage uh, when that came out, and the video jump debuted on MTV. So everybody, you know, and again, MTV was actually a music channel in 1984, right? Lots of good music off of that album. We'll talk about some of the other artists here in a second. We oh, obviously we number obviously, one movie was Ghostbusters. Yeah, Ray 80. Parker singing the song. I remember that. But uh, probably my favorite move, two movies out of 1984 would be Beverly Hills Cop with Eddie Murphy and The Terminator with Arnold Schwarzenegger. So those are two of my favorites from. Uh, yeah, thank you. I would I would agree. Axel Foley was a riot. Yeah. Axel, Eddie Murphy uh, as Axel. 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 Well, Ackman, As yeah. Bronson from show it said several times in the um, yes, yeah. excellent, excellent. So, uh, we know Jump, we know Panama, we know Hot for a Teacher. Um, I always say that, uh, for me, I like two songs on that uh, particular uh, album in addition to those three. Uh, I love Top Jimmy, that's probably my one of my most underrated uh, songs on there, and I love uh, Drop Dead Legs. From that, anything that stands out for you on the 1984? Well, I, mean, pretty much, I mean, all of them, uh, even House of Pain. I yeah. mean, probably the obviously the 1984 track is just a you know layover, you know, like a layover intro coming into mm -hmm. jump. So that I don't really count that as a particular song in itself. So the pro, probably my disappointing track off there is actually I'll Wait. I didn't. I mean, to me, it was if I'm going to pick a song I didn't like particularly well on that was i'll wait so but everything else i think was spot on yeah the keyboards and that get a little bit too much for me and and it's I'll, very dated yeah it is i would agree with that so i mean this was a great year in terms of such it'd be mostly because of uh, mtv such an influx of the of british music plus rock still being there you had a lot of good r b artists um on there but uh any anybody else that jumps out there i'm gonna well, i'm gonna throw one out here in just a second i want to see if you say the same thing well i'm gonna go ahead and throw prince out there because obviously he dominated a lot of 1984 as well with when doves cry was the number one song and also purple rain was on the radio constantly during that summer and then also the movie purple rain was uh very popular as well so i'll throw that out there you know i get i'll give prince some props because he's a pretty decent guitarist too so yeah, no, I would agree. I was going to mention that they got a uh, Paul McCartney song out there, so uh, that was pretty cool. Um, I, I wrote some of it down because I knew I wouldn't um, remember it. My wife is a big fan of the Cars. Uh, Billy Joe had some. Billy Joel had some good stuff. Um, I was always a big Tears for Fears fan, so I loved. I love that. I love that music. Um, we got to mention the Boss. He he had a lot of good music um what about you anybody else that i mean i've got a list of others i just don't want to steal your thunder no i think uh 
actually, I think we should save that for a, another show, and we'll actually go over some more of that uh, that great music from '84. Uh, so we won't take up the our entire time on this one. But I think that's a that'd be kind of that's kind of a good segue into another episode of some uh, pop culture card stuff to come up in the uh, very near future here. Well, I, I will have to say because another one that I really liked um, was uh, Huey Lewis in the News. So I'll stop. I'll stop there. I won't go into some of the other ones that I got, but just a great era of uh, music. And again, uh, a lot of it had to do with uh, with MTV. So yep. we've given it. We've given the Don set a grade. Uh, we got lots of good players in there. It's a good transition. Whitey and the, and everybody was going to make a couple of more trades before the uh, the eighty five season. Um, but overall. Um, Andy gives it a, a C minus to B plus. Mm -hmm. I give it a B plus. I would agree. So um, anyway, great show as always. I hope uh, you all are continuing to enjoy this. I have mentioned this over and over again, but we can't do this without everyone not only liking and sharing, but uh, please consider um, following us as, as well. That's really, really important. Anything else, Andy, you want to close with? Uh, our one of our early shows here in 2024. No, I think the, I think you covered it pretty well, and uh, we'll just hit something. We'll I think we'll hit something else from '84. You know, coming up here in the very near future, what's a little more uh, pop culture because that was uh, a very big as a very big transition time for us as uh, as we were moving into adulthood back in the day. So yeah, we will uh, we will hit that down the road. Wonderful. All right. Well, everybody, uh, our social media channels are, are many anymore, and we're continuing to add things and add new ideas. And behind the scenes, Andy and I are tinkering with other things to get our material out there even more so. Don't want to spill the beans because sometimes we get overexcited and share stuff and we're just not ready to do it because of our other time commitments. But uh, social media, threads, Facebook, Twitter, here or x is what it's called here on uh, youtube instagram all of the above please consider following us we greatly appreciate it because this really is not work to us this is on stressful days when we talk to one another almost every day about what we're going to do for our next show we look forward to this because it's relaxing and a ton of fun so with that yep. appreciate everything appreciate your review andy it was good as always so all right brian we'll talk to you later thanks everybody we will see you next time